my name is Håkan and I'm from Sweden and I'd like to show you one of the two turbo snow bikes that me and my buddy have designed and built. Um, hopefully you understand my bad English with big Swedish accent but I do my best. And there have been a lot of interest in our home-built turbo kit and also our new uh, track kit. Uh, the turbo kit was uh, built in 2012 and our new kit we started in uh, August 2013 and completed it in February 2014. Uh, we are very pleased with the performance and rideability uh, both of the turbo kit and the snow bike kit. Uh, and I'll, I'll um, show you some of the features of both the turbo kit and the snow bike kit. The bike is a KTM 2012 500EXC. Um, uh, before we built the turbo kit we uh, put it on the dyno and it showed it had 56 horsepower at rear wheel. Uh, with this turbo kit uh, it will have uh, it have, has 96 horsepower uh, at uh, 0.7 bar or roughly 10 pounds of boost. Uh, the engine is modified uh, with uh, a low compression piston uh, currently a 10 to 1 in compression ratio. Uh, it also has have heavier studs and additional clutch spring for double cl clutch pressure to reduce slippage. As you see, this is a rear mount turbo kit. Uh, we have used uh, uh, MC Express components such as the turbocharger, the muffler and their piggyback uh, fuel control. Uh, the Mitsubishi turbocharger is the same as in their uh, Yamaha Phaser turbo kits or the Polaris uh, RZR UTV. Here you see the, the um, rear mount intercooler and it had, has worked pretty well. It's greatly oversized. Uh, we have seen it only this top part of the intercooler that actually melts snow, otherwise it's completely covering the snow. But we bought these, few, these cooling elements cheaply and we saw that it would fit, so we, we used it. Here you see how the, from the outlet, from the turbocharger, uh, the flow come fr flow through the intercooler down and front to the intake of the pl plenum. Um, we also made a air intake uh, tur <laughs> nitro turbo style uh, and. Uh, uh, with a mesh filter with from MS Express, uh, it looks odd. Uh, you might think that it would be in the way, but it has proven to work pretty well. As you know, you don't often th throw your leg over the bike except when you step on it. So uh, we have haven't had any kind of problem with. Uh, snow in filter. You could probably uh, go straight back, but we chose uh, this 
hose band and it it uh, right now it feels okay uh, here you have um, I'll show you, uh, you you can hardly not see much of the plenum but it's made very big and we believe that this is a good way to equalize uh, the pr um, pressure pulses in, at the in air intake of a single cil cylinder engine and um, it has proven to work well. Um, we're using the um, MS Express fuel controller uh, and the piggyback uh, fuel injection. Uh, beneath the let, le it doesn't show very well here, but beneath this cover we have a TCV valve. The TCV valve uh, is able to raise boost um, electronically and here you have, uh, uh, we, we uh, connected an on-off switch uh, to, uh, to um, engage or disengage the TCV valve. In that way we can have two boost levels on off mode or low, uh, 0.5 bars of boost and roughly 85 horsepower and on high boost uh, the, when the TCV valve is engaged, we have 96 horsepower. Uh, this can be a good thing when we, as we run this bike on uh, 102 octane race fuel on the high boost level, and on low boost we can run it with regular or prime, pr premium uh, uh, pump gas. Um, here you see, it's not shown very well, but at this, here comes the additional fuel hose and it's connected to the fuel rail that goes inside the plenum. At, at the intake there's an uh, additional fuel injector, injector that delivers extra fuel under boost. Uh, here we have connected the the pressure feed as this is a plain bearing turbo uh, it requires uh, extra uh, pressure fed lubrication uh, and this is connected to uh, with a different uh, oil filter uh, lid. The oil uh, return line is, is connected at uh, one of the oil plugs. So the, the oil drains from the turbo down to the, to the oil, oil plug. And um, up front, just not the very fancy or but, uh, boost gauge, but it, it works pretty well. Uh, and let, I'd like to show you uh, our home built track kit. It's, uh, it may look similar as the, the mountain horse uh, but um, there are some, uh, some features that I'd like to show you. Uh, at first um, there, the Tunnel panel, panels have a slightly different design uh, and a kind of duck tail at the rear. Um, the, the tubal frame is um, made out of 1.2 millimeter docal steel. Uh, it's uh, similar as um, chrome molly tubes but uh, seem to be easier to uh, to weld. Uh, at the rear uh, 8 inch slide dog rear wheels and um, up in front we're running 7 tooth timber sled drivers uh, and a custom made drive shaft. 
The rails are uh, Skidoo MXZ with extensions, but we'll, we will probably switch to other rails later on. We think that these are not that good, good looking. Uh, the track is a ch Challenger uh, snowmobile track, 3460 3, millimeters with 59 millimeter lugs, and we have cu cut it down uh, to the width of 320 millimeters. Uh, suspension wise, we have uh, something that's similar as the Easy Ride suspension. Uh, and we're uh, running um, Fox 2 shocks with ad additional high gear uh, dual pressure kits. Uh, we have seen at our mock up that uh, the suspension travel works pretty, very well, and, uh, but uh, in order to, to keep the track tension, we have this little sliding part at the rear. Uh, it mostly used when the front of the suspension is compressed. Uh, and this will, uh, the front shock will lay down and push back the rails and therefore tensioning track. And therefore this, this sliding part is required. One thing that uh, we think is a very nice thing on this kit is the chain tensioning feature that um, enables us to move the jack shaft very much like when you tension uh, your chain with uh, your rear wheel uh, on a bike. Um, we have made custom made uh, bearing housings with this oh I, um with um, allen screws that push back the the shaft and the brake caliper is connected to the to the bearing house and so as you tension the move the, the shaft it also moves this caliper um, and we think this is a good thing as you, uh, it's less part and uh, um, you can use, you can run any kind of gearing what you like. Uh, with the other uh, system of a tension pulley, you have a, not that wide range of tensioning such as uh, with running with a movable shaft. Uh, this uh, sprocket has a clampex. It's kind of um, when you when you tighten these Allen screws, it squeezes to the shaft and the sprocket, and uh, that doesn't that means that it doesn't require a a, a key keyway. We try. Uh, we have made the. Uh, and the chain case has a kind of different design that we believe is much stronger as this uh, rim is 10 by 30 millimeter and is bolted from the inside of the tunnel panel and that that means that the whole rim reinforces the, the tunnel panel and the dry shaft. This strut also uh, further um, stiffens and reinforces the whole dry train or, or tunnel, tunnel panels. Plastic um, cover uh, down here is nice uh, in case you hit a, a stone or stumps or something like that. Up front. Uh, up front, we have a new style of ski mount. Uh, we think that it's uh, 
as strong as uh, the timber sled. It is made out of 8 millimeter water jet cut aluminum. And we've seen that it's uh, quite simple to manufacture as you simply bolt it together. These clamps are just regular hydraulic clamp for hydraulic tubings. Well, hope you enjoyed our t my tour of our home built turbo kit and snow bike kit. Uh, and you must keep in mind that this is just a home built project and we are no snow bike or turbo kit uh, manufacturers that see this as a fun uh, hobby project and uh, hope you liked uh, my video. Thank you.